never knew was a one leg 70 year old Aussie. Call the other one. Oh, he couldn't even read a map, he used to navigate by barn tops, he said. Two every hundred square miles in the bush, and he was never late home. I suppose you do the same. You know, Rob. What's that down there, then? It's the welcome wagon, Newark. Now you're going to tell me what colour curtain. Help me. Do you like to have a look? Some sprog from a weapons school getting out of his brand. George Howe Yoke, Ruskin Air Services. Remember it. There's a lunatic in your low flying area doing his own brand of Harry Carey. I want the bastard sorted. This isn't a bloody taxi. If you've wet your pants, I'll drop you off. You're taking me and that gear to Glasgow. I'll deliver it myself. If you reckon, I've nursed thousands of nylons across the Atlantic. To let you loose in Maryland, you need educating, Archie. Besides which, I own the bloody taxi. You take me there, then you wait. Since when are we in the business of one-way trips? I don't know why I bother. I've got this nice little deal for you. So I'm rather heavy gear to go to Malta. Might take a couple of days, but I want you ready. No, thanks. You're running a business, or so I'm told. I'm putting money your way. I'm running my business. You're just a contact, not the chairman. Two days hanging about Glasgow waiting for you. It's balmy. It's pointless. I've got work to do, booked. I'll see you in 48 hours. At Garden. <laughs> ben? You sound odd. Anything wrong? No, just reporting. Not any news. Mm. Yeah, several things. Uh, yeah, your fruit collection from Plymouth to Liverpool tomorrow afternoon. Oh, well, that means I can... Well, Peter can do it. No, he can't. Why not? He's in Bonn. Since when? Yesterday. There's a shuttle going from Manchester to Germany. Some emergency steel and mining conference. BEA couldn't handle it at such short notice. Peter heard about it and made an offer. Well, I hope it was a good one. 
Please, as please as punch. Three round trips over ten days. It's good, eh? All right, well, I'll go to Plymouth. What else? Uh, oh, yeah, Peter heard about this one when he was in Manchester. It's to pick up some merchant seamen in Tunis. They're delivering a ship there. Oh, it's no good for you, though. Peter's got the seats. How much the hour? Thirty-five pounds, plus the usual bits and pieces, of course. Oh, grab it. No, St. Thor's, give me the number and I'll deal with it. Why? Because there's only one hour from Malta, that's why. Malta? Oh, come on. Give us the number. I'm going to have to find Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Ruskin Air Services based a gun. I want the name of the captain. And it's important, Air Commodore. We are about to fight another war, Mr. Snell. And just because hostilities haven't quite commenced, that doesn't mean to say that our training has to be any less correct, efficient, or professional. No, 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 Mr. Snell. Unofficial low-flying cowboys are not part of that preparation. Besides, anything below 500 feet damn well belongs to the RAF. Come in. Good afternoon. This is Ruskin Air Services. Yes, can I help you? Uh, Board of Trade. Inspector Snell. This is an official investigation, Mrs... Uh... Hmm. Where are your airplanes? Out. I would like to see the flight logs for George Abel George Howe Yoke for the past week up to and including yesterday, if you please. Why? What on earth? I do have the power to impound the relevant documents. Just show me the flight logs, madam. You know what this is all about, of course. Ah. When can I interview Mr. Ruskin? When he gets back. And when will that be? Late tomorrow. Kindly inform Mr. Ruskin that he must ring me the moment he returns. Good day. One day, he'll be on the spot when he's wanted, waiting. One day, he'll employ you, Cade. Squadron leader, I am told that snails have orgasms. It may be true, but I don't believe it. So until the day of proof, I'll stick to what I know. Hey, Scotty, which one's he taking? He's leaving tonight. Oh, this one. Does he know? Son, just for a moment, I employ him. Guess who's done his load sheet? Jack, but there's been an official from the Board of Trade here. What, sir? It, it's an official investigation. What's it all about? You haven't let him see the books, have you? Yes. Oh, come I on. I have no choice. Anyway, he wants you to ring him. <laughs> Won't be here, will I? What do you mean? I want to just tell him to take a bloody running jump. Jack! That German contract, solid. Uh-huh. Unlike this DI sir, but at last. Oh. Not too little, not too much. But just enough. I oh, know, I oh, know. It's uh, not through bad manners I don't offer you attention, Miss Shaw. Only out consideration for the lucky humble. Well, passengers are a thing of the future, Jack. Well, in the meantime, we stick to the mucking, marine props. Yeah, but who for? Who cares? How much they weigh? Fifteen hundred pounds each. Have you got lifting gear? Well, haven't you? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Right. Well, we better get started. 
How are you, Mr. McGregor? Frisken Air Services. Mrs. Shaw? Uh, no, miss. Lorimer Snell. You informed me that Mr. Ruskin would be returning. Oh, so I'm so sorry, Mr. Snell. You've just missed him. He's, uh, he's just left for Malta. Uh, now, he's, he's due back on uh, Sunday. If you'd like him to ring you on... Jack, even the good Lord took a day off. Idle bugger. Malta's a long run. You'll be wanting me for engineer. No, you got a bum. Well, so who goes with you? Tell me. What? Now, even with this lot, we're still two and a half thousand pounds spare. There is no spare. These are going and I nothing else. Well, that means we can fill right up with fuel, do a motor in one. Yeah, that's nearly ten hours. Well, so what? Look, can we get this lot shifted? It's not my ambition to spend the rest of my life in Yorkshire. Fuel costs, Ernie. You skin. My money's at the other end. Our money, son. You can spend some of it in Tunis. Right. Thank you, Mr. Snell. Thank you very much indeed. Percy, I found my bandit. The name's Ruskin. He's on his way to Malta doing some charter. <laughs> what do I want? I want his balls for bookends, sir. Flights. Morning. Fill her up, will you? Yeah, got your coupons. You are. Ruskin? Mr. Ruskin, aye. Step back, flight. I have to inform you that you will be denied all facilities. Who the hell are you? Flight Lieutenant Goddard. Well, I've got a cargo to unload and deliver. I need to buy fuel before I can take off again. Negative. Well, that's the officer commanding. Correction. You are instructed to report to him. Albert? Skin. Mr. Ruskin, sir. You want to see me? Can I take it from your turn, Mr. Ruskin, that you've been filled in? What? Over withdrawal of facilities. Aye, but I haven't been given any reason. I have my orders. To stop me taking off. I have no intention of hanging on your tail skid personally, Mr. Ruskin, but equally neither am I allowed to provide you with fuel. I'm a civilian. This is still a military base. It's also a commercial airport. You've no control of my business life. No, Mr. Ruskin, I haven't. And as I'm not guilty of any criminal act, I fail to see... Mr. Ruskin, it is the Board of Trade that has suspended your license, not His Majesty's Air Force. I'm suspended. Why? Don't you know the reason? No, I don't, do you? I'm afraid not. But as you can see from the signal, it comes from the top. I see. How can I find this? There are channels of appeal available to civilians. What's the telephone delay to England? Five to seven hours. How much? 30 bob for three minutes. Somebody's been bloody clever. It's Friday. Am I under arrest? <laughs> Good Lord, no. Well, Mr. Ruskin, I've been instructed not to help you in any way. 
I'm not instructed to obstruct you. Ruskin Air Services? Yes. Papers. You the pilot? No. Wireless operator. Come on. So, who's in charge? Captain Roskin. And where's he? I don't know, Malta somewhere. You see, the point is, Mr. Clark. He's left without clearing his manifest and general declaration. But you've got the papers. His signature is on these documents, Mr. Clark. He'll be back. When? I don't know for sure. These marine props, they are for? I don't know. Until I see the captain, your aircraft is technically impounded. My father thinks it is better if I collect you. Uh, this could be interesting. So, so can I phone Junis? Yes. In England? If you can get through. Problem, Mr. Valetti. As I told you on the phone, I've been grounded. I already knew. Oh? This is a small island, Mr. Ruskin. That is why I was not there to meet you. I apologize. You have been denied facilities for reasons they won't give you. But you have my props on board, which I have half paid for. I hope you are not going to refuse to release them, Mr. Ruskin. I need those propellers. Well, I need few. Like you said, it's a small island. You must know someone somewhere. Well, just give me a lorry, I'll pick it up. You only get the props when I get the juice. You're my only contact, Mr. Valetti. I'm gonna have to hammer you. Do you have any money for fuel? Not yet. When, Mr. Ruskin? When? When you pay me. I only need enough fuel to get me onto Tunis. Here is an advance. One hundred pounds. Do you have a co-pilot? No. Coffee. Or would you prefer a drink, perhaps? No, just coffee. I'm fine. Mr. Ruskin, you might understand that you will be flying the plane. Yeah. Most of my business as a chandler is with the dockyards, therefore military. Though I have a problem, Mr. Ruskin. I can't make enemies. Well, don't worry, I'll be careful. 
Just point me to where I can get some fuel. Coley. Garden 3283. And now he's in Malta. Malta? Even in these austere times, I assume one does not go to Malta without some prior knowledge, hmm? Without some hours, maybe a day's preparation. Or was the preparation so hectic, Miss Shaw, that time could not be found for the courtesy of a simple phone call? Why are you back again? I am going to go through every logbook from the first day of business conducted in any form by Ruskin Air Services, Miss Shaw, involving overseas flights. Malta, like Rome, like Biarritz, could be a useful stop on one's way to, say, Haifa, Miss Shaw. Ruskin Air Services? This is the duty officer, Northolt. Yes? You had a signal in from Malta about your aircraft, how you? Ah. Yes, yes, go ahead. Arrived safely, unable to refuel, aircraft grounded, indefinite delay. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. The signal was quite explicit. Yes, but what does it mean? Madam, we're just passing on a message at the request of the captain. I've read that's all. Thank you. How long will it take? What? The fuel. Uh, not even I can steal in broad daylight. But we've shaken the hand. Huh? Until darkness, we have the worst of murder. Killing of the time. Huh? All right. Good hell. Do you have a lorry? Lorry? Of course I've got a lorry, no, but... No, there is a better way. Hmm. We'll use the one we have for the propellers. I cannot bring it yet, though. It would look too suspicious in the daylight, huh? For us and for you. Is it the Delimara? Eh, what? Then you know we'll bring it. Honey, more Delimara. Jeep and track the pillar at the hour. More, 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 eh, Jeep? Delimara. You, better to go home soon, da? Maybe. That made a civilian deck, sir. Yeah. I'm very sorry, sir. There are no rooms. This is the main bloody pipeline. <laughs> Tiran. <laughs> what a sweet pleasure, eh? Borrowing from the ref. <laughs> you are now in possession of Top secret information. Do not leave the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
airport gate won't open before seven. You must stay here till morning. Right. What about her? Mm, she goes home to her father. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie and the Lilac. Hey, stop, stop! Peter! Bye, Peter! Signal. You know that you are unable to refuel. My signal? What you told Jenny in her bloody condition. Listen, Jack, gardens alive with Board of Trade officials. You're grounded. It's a bloody good job we did come. I could have got out of here. Oh, if you're grounded. But anyway, Jenny insisted. Look, if the worst came to the worst, I could have hired a pilot. You two are supposed to be in Bonn. We are. Tomorrow. Albie, did you get in touch with Tunis? Yeah, I'm with you there midday. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Look, we come here right in the middle oh, of our sure bunker. Oh, Peter, will you? Hey, you got seats, haven't you? Yes. Well, as you like passengers that much, why don't you go to Tunis and pick up the sailors? How much fuel you got, Mac? Plenty. We topped up in Geneva. Right, and I've got enough here to get us to Rome. Two hours to get organised. Start unlashing the cargo, will you? It's going on this lorry. Now, you have cleared the inbound, have you? In the end, yeah. Right, give me ten minutes to get round. Hang on, hang on! Look, how the blazes are you going to get off? You're going to find my flight plan along with yours. But I can't put you down as captain. You're grounded. Albert's captain. <laughs> Your dad will have his propellers in an hour and a half. But I'll have my money, won't I? I had it here all the time. <laughs> What if they ask about the petrol at the gate? We're going to just say civilian sources. Come on, Peter, come on! Morning flight. What time's Mr. Goddard doing his rounds? 8.25. <laughs> you better hurry. Give him our regards. Thanks very much for all your help. Ciao.
our services. Where are they going? One to Tunis, one to Rome, sir. Pilots? Peter Whitney to Tunis, Albert Clark to Rome. Ruskin, which one's here? Doesn't say, sir. It says plus one on both of them, sir. Ah, but Clark isn't a pilot. six this morning. What? Well, apparently they don't serve petrol before mass on Sundays in Champino. <sighs> He'll be back this afternoon. Pity you didn't ring yesterday. You'd have saved Jenny a lot of strain. What's all this, then? She's selling off. <laughs> Having a jumble sale. That's the <laughs> bloody sailors. You'd never credit it. Twenty-four of the bastards drank and skewed oh. their way all across France. <laughs> Passengers. Will it be clean for today? If the executives delight in carbolic. Oh. Give your hand in a minute, Mac. No, you won't. I will. I have nothing better to do in me holidays. Where is Peter, by the way? Dreaming what he'd do with Jack. Oh. Right, Mr. Shaw. Are oh, those seats one by one? Oh, your horses are very kind of first. Listen, right. Okay. Don't oh, mind your head. Okay. And don't bang it on the side. Pulled up and did what? I rolled away, sir. The what? Sir. Delete that um, chateau brick from the evidence. I think we'll just refer to that maneuver as passing over the target area, don't you? Oh, don't worry, David. We've got enough to nail the bastard anyway. But anything, you understand, anything that could remotely be construed as acrobatics would have to be explained to the civil board. So, I'd have to be careful. You stupid man. Hello, Mother. Now then, Jen. I'll be. Your wife phoned lunchtime and she's worried about you. Oh, I better phone her now then. Well, it won't be long, will you? Why not? Peter make it to Bond, did he? Now, what's going on? Wouldn't you rather know about the Raven Air Jack, Beauty I'll be making? You haven't up even to? asked her how she is. Oh, no. How are you, love? Radiant. Well? <laughs> how did you get back without a pilot? I'll be fluous. Cover first, then you can have your pit. What Raven Air Beauty? You know, I'll tell you when I get home. You've only got to wait half an hour. What was the name of that bloke from the Board of Trade? Right. Phil. Oh. Yeah, okay. okay. Do we have his number? Card on the desk there somewhere. Right. Jack, do you need me tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Cheerio, Jen. Mr. Bye, Shaw. LB. Come on, right. No attacks, Ned. No attacks. You come here to read the bloody riot act. I'm here because I don't think any woman in Jenny's condition should have to spend the whole of Sunday in a state of nerves. Mm. Or come here and run a business not knowing anything. Jack, hold it, hold she's it. My... Uh, don't the numbers, she's... please. White or this nine, is my five, last. Nine, oh. You can't expect me not to feel. Well, damn it, you can't. And even when she's ready and wants me to, I'll take her home. There's no need. Will you two stop fighting over me? We're fighting over me. I don't understand you. No, and that's what scares you, doesn't it? It's you're a good man and you've got a kind wife. You only want the best, but it has to be your best. I'll look after Jen and the baby, but I'll do it. Hello? Board of Trade. Yeah, licensing department, please. Uh, my name is Ruskin of Ruskin Air Services. <laughs> Put him through. Robert here. Can I help you? Yes. My name is Ruskin of Ruskin Air Services, Garton, Yorkshire. Ah, yes, Mr. Ruskin. Now, while I was in Malta over the weekend, some silly bugger tried to kid me I've been grounded. So I've flown home to Jack. Could you advise me? Yes, that is correct. As from Friday last, you have been provisionally suspended, pending the findings of an RAF board of inquiry. I can't stuff the RAF. I'm a civilian pilot. And our own civil investigation. You will, of course, be requested to attend any necessary proceedings. But why have I been suspended? What's it all about? 
air, low flying in a restricted zone, and near collision with a military aircraft. Am I allowed to know the name of the complainant? Oh, yes, of course. All relevant information will be made available to you prior to your interview. Thank you. Well, you've had a good run these last 12 months. That was a very silly thing to say, yeah. I've been looking for you for the past four days. Tomorrow's the Board of Trade inquiry into my suspension. Oh, dear. All right, I'll stick it in the fridge. As you've been taking off my blood for the last year, I thought you might like to put a drop back. Why? We do have an interest in the aircraft, remember? It'd be in my interest, pilot. You should have to sell your aircraft. How do you want to turn up? Be frog to subpoena it. Jack, it is not a court of law. No. And that's why you're going to lie for me. And by God, am I going to coach you. Jack, give me one good reason why I should allow you in public to impugn my reputation for truth, square dealing and loving my mother. Think, Ernie. Order trade. Licenses, imports, exports, guns, hyper, nylons, black market. If I go down, Ernie, they're coming with me. And that's exactly what happened. Thank you, Captain Ruskin. Any questions, gentlemen? You were not alone in the cockpit, Captain. No. My passenger, Mr. Ernest Kay, was travelling in the co pilot seat. You're taking evidence of Mr. Kay? Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Ruskin. Will you ask the Air Commodore to come in, please? Air Commodore Rupert. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> ah, thank you for coming, Air Commodore. Uh, this is Mr. Ruskin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have met. Now, will you tell us, please, in your own words. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I feel I should point out that as a serving officer, I am subject to the Official Secrets Act. Well, this is an official inquiry, Air Commodore. Uh, presumably the same safeguards reply. Therefore, I must temper my evidence in the light of the Official Secrets Act. Not to the point of tampering with the truth, I trust. <laughs> Air Commodore. <clears throat> I was carrying out a routine low-flying exercise in a restricted military training area reserved for that purpose. As you know, low-flying requires immense concentration. I had just passed a specified turning point when I was suddenly confronted by this diving Dakota. I just had time to pull out over the top. I estimated his height at about 200 feet. When I recovered from the invasion, I turned back, caught up with the deck, which was climbing rapidly by this time to 1,000 feet, and I took his number. Thank you. This low-flying exercise, was it properly authorised and conducted? You're aware of the Royal Air Force Board of Inquiry? You were just doing your five hours annual joyriding, weren't you? That surely, as an Air Minister requirement for a staff officer, can't be subject to the Official Secrets Act. But the barrel roll at the end was, I suppose. I'm sorry, Mr Ruskin. You haven't been invited to question the witness yet. Is that all, Air Commodore? Yes. Your question, Mr. Ruskin. Thank you. When you turned away, was it a bow roll or a slow roll, Air Commodore? That's quite irrelevant. All aerobatics are illegal, therefore relevant, Air Commodore. You were low-flying, Ruskin. You had no right to be there. That is the question. You were aerobatting all over the bloody sky. We were low to keep clear of you. You were hedge-hopping. You've come here to blacken my name and hide your own dangerous lunatic behaviour behind the Official Secrets Act. Uh, Commodore, what is the difference between a barrel roll and a slow roll? Hello? Mrs Harvey? Yes, I'm ringing about the ad 
for rooms to let. Mm. Oh, well, that's fine. I'll come right now if you like. Jenny Shaw, yes. Right then. Thank you. Bye. Being uh, someone of some standing in the commercial community, I had to be in Glasgow that day. You know what I mean. Uh, Mr. Cade. No, that, that's not saying that because I do own a percentage quite legitimately of the aircraft. Mr. Cade, I'm afraid you're repeating yourself. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry. Would it help if I were to simply ask you questions and you replied? When did you first become aware that something had happened? Uh, you mean w what time or what? What happened to make you feel that something was wrong? Oh, Raskin, uh, Jack uh, said, what the hell's he doing? And what was he doing? He was acrobatting. Did you see this with your own eyes? Uh, no, uh, it was a phrase Mr. Ruskin used later. Uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't see nothing at all. All I know is uh, I was strapped in, see, which was lucky, cos Mr. Ruskin took evasive action. And you don't do that unless you've got something to evade, do you? I mean, we went screaming down. And we straightened out. And like a monster from the deep, right in front of the windscreen, was his plane, and it screamed right over the top of us. It was terrible. We was both terrified. Mr. Ruskin was... How he managed to keep control, I will never know. We was both. Why? Who spoke first? And me. I, I, I said, uh, what was that? Mr. Ruskin says, the Harvard. Then after a bit, on the left-hand side, there he was again, sort of peeping in, um, like, like he was taking our number. Then he pulled up and turned away. How did he turn away, Mr. Cade? Oh, he sort of... He sort of... rolled away. Showing off. The difference between a thousand feet and two hundred feet is considerable and dangerous, whatever the reason given, as clearly defined airspace was being violated. Against this is the possibility that Air Commodore Rupert was abusing, to some extent, his reason for being in the air. The board believes it is sensed maliciousness on both sides. Therefore, having considered very carefully the evidence this morning as to all aspects of the incident, and there being sufficient doubt on both sides, the board has decided to take no further action. Are my suspensions withdrawn? Yes. I wonder why he never reported the Air Commodore. And presumably because he never thought he'd get this result. Yes, well, you can take me out and show your gratitude, sir. I will, Ernie, I will. Uh, Mr. Ruskin, uh, uh, Laurie Miss Snell, would you come with me, please? This is official. <laughs> this way, please. Yeah, Jack. Come in. Mr. Ruskin, sir. Oh, yes. Thank you for coming. Now then. You left Luca Airport and George Abel George Howe Yoke on Sunday last and flew to Rome. Yes. You refueled and flew back to your base at Garten. Yes. Having been advised by the RAF of your provisional suspension. And the captain was Captain Clark. 
I do have a copy of the flight plan. Mr. Clark has no pilot's license. No. You flew the Dakota, didn't you, Mr. Ruskin? Yeah. Yes. Well, that constitutes, as you will appreciate, a very serious criminal offence, Mr. Ruskin. And it has been decided that you are no longer fit to exercise the privileges of your license. Your license is therefore withdrawn. Thank you. Jack tries to keep the business together when Airline continues on Plus next Sunday at 11. We'll be back at 6 o'clock in the morning with the very beautiful Jason King. <laughs> See you then.